What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, uh, Daredevil is something that we've been very much excited for, especially when we got the news uh, at D23, was it? About the 18 episodes of Daredevil. First, we were like, 18 episodes? We're in heaven. They had, there has been some concern regarding um, what this Daredevil will look like as far as when we compare to what we've seen in the Netflix show. And Brian, we love the Netflix show. What have we been saying? Whoever worked on that show, come over here. Let's, let's run it back. Instead, we're hearing Charlie Cox talking about um, maybe we can try something new and get the younger audience. Um, it doesn't have to be as gory. And now there's there's this talk of um, it's not getting a mature rating. Um, Brian, all of these things are very concerning to what we thought was a perfect show or perfect incarnation of Daredevil. Now we're hearing, I'm sorry to say, but do I dare say goofiness in the air? Somewhat, Brian, when he when you throw in, oh, maybe we can get ki kids. That's not what the series that we saw was about. I mean, Brian, what are we talking about here? First off, hope everyone's having a great holiday season. Yes. Um, Daredevil is the man without fear, but consider us the men with growing fear <laughs> about to show. And, you know, Pablo, it goes back to when we heard the Netflix characters and shows were reverting to Marvel. There's always that knee jerk of, you know, yes, Marvel's getting its characters back. But that's because we're so used to those characters being misused and abused in at other networks and other platforms yes the netflix shows with the exception of iron fist the proposition was different here you were taking and especially the case of daredevil but also in the case of the punisher also in the case of jessica jones and parts of luke cage you were taking shows that were done well and bringing them back which is a different challenge. That's a, here you go, don't screw this up. <laughs> and that Marvel hasn't really faced that before. Yeah. And so we see the challenge maybe of, of disnifying this project and trying to preserve what made it great on Netflix. I am with you. All the things we're starting to hear anecdotally about this show and what Charlie Cox is talking about fall in the category of concerns. And especially if you're going for 18 episodes, that is a definition of going for broke in the modern age. Gone are the days when TV shows did 22 <laughs> to 26 episodes a season, right? Everyone's yeah, doing yeah. six, eight, 10, maybe 12 if you're great, yeah. like Andor. But 18, if we get to like episode three and this show is off the rails because it looks weak or it's too bright or the action's too comedic or it's just lost its way relative to what we saw on netflix why are we sticking around for 18 of these i know it'll be disheartening if brian if we get to the second or third episode and with and when looking at it and saying they ruined their devil again well not again but they ruined daredevil how can the mcu ruin daredevil we thought we were going to get something on par or beyond what we originally saw in the Netflix series. I mean, Brian, it could be possible that we get some um, great court scenes where, yeah, we don't get into the fighting and the goriness that perhaps happens on a nightly basis when he's out trying to figure out stuff. It's possible, Brian. 
that that may be the case. And if that is the case, because I've heard that they're going to be spending more time on cases and in the court. If we see a, if we see a lot of that, Brian, then I don't see that I don't see there being a problem. Um, my only issue is that if you lean too far into what She Hulk was trying to do or or tried to do or a little an inkling of that, I think the show is gonna fall flat and people are gonna be heard, their voices are gonna be heard about how much they don't like this direction. Yeah, I, I agree. So let's let's pull up some quotes here. So this is from Variety. So here's here's Charlie Cox giving a lot of information. I'm fa quote. I'm fascinated to discover why they've chosen to do 18 meeting episodes. I'm imagining there's going to be an element to it that is like the old school procedural show. This is what you're talking about. Not necessarily case of the week, but something where we go really deep into Matt Murdock, the lawyer, and get to see what his life is like. If that's done right, and he really gets his hands dirty with that world. I would think there's something quite interesting about that, end quote. We're not in total disagreement with that point. But the way I think of Daredevil is this is not, this is not law and order in the yeah. sense of in those shows, in, there's that clear demarcation between the street cops and the lawyers. Daredevil, by definition, straddles that line, right? His role as an attorney and what he does as a vigilante is designed to kind of address the shortcomings of the legal system. And so yes. one of the things I thought the Netflix show did very well, it was not a legal procedure. He didn't really, he spent a little time in the courtroom and in a suit, but not a lot. I never felt like the violence in the Netflix show was violence for the sake of violence. I felt yeah. like it was part of an artistic palette. It was part of the mood they were setting for the challenge that he was facing or the opponent that he was fighting. To me, that is where TVMA, that's what it's designed for. Yeah. It's like you're not just popping off heads and splattering blood on the camera to do it. You're doing this, you're using brutality as part of the storytelling. Yeah. I'm not convinced you can just abandon that and have this character be an A plus as I don't know, like a pure, like a pure like ninja or like kung fu style, you know, warrior that doesn't ever get his hands hands dirty. I don't buy that's not how I think of Daredevil. It's not how I think of Hell's Kitchen. So yeah, he's not wrong. I'm happy to see more legal cases and maybe some more seedy characters, maybe maybe cases that connect to the kingpin. I'm happy to do that. But there has to be the balance Yeah, with the fighting side of Daredevil. It's so critical to the role. Makes me a little nervous that they're going too far to the old school procedural. And that's what you, you mentioned one thing in particular, Brian, the fighting. I hope it doesn't turn into what I heard the fighting in the Matrix Resurrection Resurrections was. Like compared to the the first Matrix, like you can see that they didn't do anything. You to, still uh, never you still <laughs> never watched that, did you? you I started watching. Like <laughs> I, I watched. You know what? The other day I started. It, it was on, and I and I and I went to turn uh, uh, to watch it, and and I saw. Uh, I think. Keanu Reeves fighting uh, the morph the new the new Morpheus, and I just I was like I I, I tapped out immediately. But nice. but that's that's my concern. The, the the brutality in the fighting was very key here, Brian. Yeah. And if they go if they turn it into a Batman and Robin pow ping, I, I'm out. I'm out if they. I made this comment when we were talking about She Hulk. I did now I kind of gave it a pass because I was like, that's She Hulk's show. So they're directing Charlie Cox, right? This is not the Daredevil writers and directors. But I found his action in his little part there very unimpressive and uninspired. I didn't mm -hmm. think he was doing cool things in his little fight scenes. If anything, I felt like he was kind of jobbing a little bit for She Hulk. And then kind of like a henchman almost when he was clearing out the room when they were kind of going through it together. I don't want to see that. Like the it's Netflix scary. show. Yeah, the Netflix show was groundbreaking. Like the single cam, the hallway fight scene, the stairwell fight scene, the, 
I mean, it wasn't the hospital. Was Charlie Cox, was the, 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 but well, I would say Punisher happened. in prison. Yes, yes, yes. Right. So like these were groundbreaking scenes for action television when they came out. That's the standard. If you can't at least get to that level, I think we're going to be <laughs> rating this show a disappointment. I don't, and I don't want to. So here's the other quote about violence, which I think is probably more concerning. Quote, this is Cox again. My opinion is this character works best when he's geared toward a slightly more mature audience. I mean, duh. We agree. My instinct is that on Disney Plus, it will be dark, but it probably won't be as gory. I would say to people hoping the Disney Plus show copies the Netflix show, we've done that. Let's take the things that really work, but can we broaden? Can we appeal to a slightly younger audience without losing what we've learned about what works? That, that appealing to slap to a younger audience is the thing that gets me scared. Like, why? Why do you need to appeal to them? I mean, I'm pretty sure the young audience loved your rendition already that you did. Why do you, how, how young are you talking about here? Exactly. That's the question, right? Cause it, I mean, there's a, there's a weird like delusion in there of like, if we're talking about young as in teenagers, they're watching TV. <laughs> man. They've seen, they're seeing more glory stuff in the horror genre and other places and television and things that are far off. I mean, like you look at shows like, you know, euphoria that are incredibly, they're pushing the boundaries on what's, yeah, kosher yeah, for these yeah, age groups, yeah. right? There's a high, those are teenage, those are teenagers in theory, characters. So is he if he's talking about like kids, like my daughter's eight, like that age, this character ain't for that demographic. I'm sorry. That's not what I if that's the goal, make the show animated and leave us alone. I I agree 100 percent Um but yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. Are you concerned with what Charlie Cox has been saying? Are you concerned with the possible direction Daredevil might take? Will it be too different for you um, when you compare it to the amazing stuff we got at Netflix? It's, yeah. it's getting scary. Yeah, and, as, bad, and, it, and as, as concerning as it is for taking the edge off Cox, it's triply concerning to take the edge off of Vincent D'Onofrio, which we already saw what that looked like in Hawkeye. It doesn't work. That was Kingpin without his edge. It looked like Kingpin, sounded like Kingpin, but he didn't act and fight like Kingpin. And it, it, it was jarring and it didn't work in that fight scene with Kate Bishop. We can't have that in this show. <laughs> You trying to make Kingpin? He's not. He's not the Pillsbury Doughboy. Like <laughs> you can't make him that to a younger audience. He's a bad dude. I... Yeah, and the way Hawkeye was building Kingpin up, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. It, it, it just he didn't even get to see him or talk to him. We, I was waiting to see what kind of interaction they were gonna get, but you know, we already see signs, Brian. The fans already see signs of this doesn't look or feel like the performances we we got and doesn't look like we're going to get. I don't know. That's the thing is, D'Onofrio's performance is in the pantheon of villainous performances for this genre. Why do you <laughs> want him to reinvent that? You just want him to build on it, expand on it. And also in the back of my mind, you know, the one thing we didn't get, which is still sitting there is like, don't you want the vicious, sadistic, scheming Kingpin someday to cross paths with Spider-Man? Don't you want that? You want him to be now a Now you joke? can have it, it's there. <laughs> but he got beat by Kate Mitch. I know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Let's see what happens. Let us know in the comment section below uh, what you guys think of this uh, of, the, of this stuff uh, that that's going on with the with the Daredevil character and where and where you think it's gonna go. Um, Brian, any last words? In fairness, this is a ways off. We talked about it with the echo delay. It, Cox also said he is shooting. This is brutal. Eleven months. For a wow. TV. 11 months for one season of a TV show. This really is like out of the 80s and 90s, the way they used to do this. So this yeah. show is not coming till 
I think probably late 24, maybe even 25 before we yeah. actually see it. So there is a lot of time to course correct. There's a lot of time yeah. to shoot things, test drive it. As we know with ratings, you can shoot something that's R rated and then edit it down, test it with an audience, see how. So we don't want to, like, we're not sending up the smoke signals yet. We're just yeah. flagging that the early comments are not ideal. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. Woo!